Welcome to Electro Online. Here's a really good example to help us understand a little bit more about what a torque is, what a moment is, and how to calculate each of them. And in the end, when we calculate the torque caused by a couple or the moment caused by a couple, it doesn't really matter where we place the couple or with respect to what point we're trying to find the, uh, the torque. So here we have three identical beams. They're all four meters long. Notice we have a couple of 400 Newton forces acting on the beam, one at one meters, one at two meters. Let's see what happens when we move the second uh, force two meters away from the first force instead of uh, one meter right there. And then what happens when we take the two forces and simply move them to a different location on the beam, still one meter apart. In each case, we're going to find the torque relative to A, the torque relative to B, and we're going to find the moment of, that, of those two forces or the moment of the couple. All right, starting with the top beam right here, we're going to find the torque relative to A. So the torque <coughs> relative to A is equal to, well, we have a 400 Newton force, which would cause a force on the beam to make the beam rotate in this direction if there were no other forces available. And that would be a clockwise motion, a clockwise motion be a, uh, that would be a negative torque. So this would be a minus 400 newtons times a distance of one meter and that would be in the z direction. Notice that if you take your fingers and point them in the direction of the force that would be the rotation, the torque would be in the negative z direction. On the other hand, here this force would cause the beam to rotate in a counterclockwise direction It gives you a positive z direction for the torque. So it would be plus um, 400 newtons times the distance of two meters from point A, two meters, so that would be a positive component to the torque, and so we have a minus 400 newton meters plus 800 newton meters, that gives us a total of a plus 400 newton meters in the z direction. All right, now let's find the torque of those very same two forces relative to B and see what we get. So the torque relative to B is equal to now notice, this force would cause a clockwise rotation, oh, no, sorry, take that back, a counterclockwise rotation about point B. Counterclockwise means a positive torque, so it would be a plus 400 newtons. And the distance from the line of action force to the point of rotation is now 3 meters. Now the second force here, the 400 newton meters, will cause a clockwise rotation about point B. That would be a negative torque, so it would be minus 400 meters or 400 newtons times a distance of two meters. And notice we have a 1,200 newton meters minus 800 newton meters, which gives me a 400 newton meters. Notice it really makes no difference. If we have a pair of forces that, cause, that form a couple acting on a beam like this, the torque relative to A is exactly the same as the torque relative to B. Now let's find the moment of those two forces. And what we're going to do is we're going to do it in two ways. The first way, we're going to take the vector from the left force to the right force, and we're going to call this the vector right here, call this the R vector. And so therefore, the moment is going to be equal to, now I'm going to use the green, the R vector multiplied times the force. Now of course we take this vector multiplied times this force, and so this is equal to one meter in the positive x direction, so that would be one meter in the positive x direction multiplied times this 400 newton force, and that's pointing in the positive y direction, so times 400 newtons in the positive y direction, and i times j, when you cross or we do a vector product with i times j, point your fingers in the direction of the i, then point your fingers in the direction of the j, so x, y, your thumb points in the direction of the z, and so therefore we get 1 times 400, that's 400 newton meters in the positive z direction. So notice that the moment calculated for those two forces, you get the exact same result as the torque relative to A and the torque relative to B. Well, now let's turn things around. Let's now use this vector right here. Let's call that R vector, so we draw a vector from where this force acts to where this force acts. 
So the moment should be this R vector times this force. Let's see what we get this time. All right, so the moment is equal to the R vector times the force. Now to distinguish the two forces, let's call this the force on the right. Let's call this the force on the left. So here that would be the force on the right. This would be the force on the left so that we can distinguish the two forces. So this is equal to negative one meter because it's pointing in the negative one direction. So negative one meter in the i direction times, notice that's a negative 400 newtons in the y, negative y direction. So negative 400 newtons in the j direction is equal to, now what will be the direction of the moment? So curl your fingers in the direction of the of the position vector, then call your direction, the fingers in the direction of the force. Notice your thumb points out, so negative i times negative j gives you a positive k result. So that's a positive 400 newton meters in the k direction. So, some useful things here. The moment of a pair of forces on a beam like that is always going to be equal to the, to the torque relative to point A and the torque relative to point B, the both ends of the beam. Notice that the, the results of the calculation of the moment is exactly the same whether or not you take the position vector from the left uh, force or the right force or the position, position vector from the right force to the left force. You always will get the exact same result. That's how it should be. Now, what happens when we go to a situation like this where we take the forces and put them twice as far away from each other same force but twice the distance between them notice what happens to the moment so in this case the moment is going to be equal to r cross f notice in this case the position vector will be twice as long so this will be equal to two meters in the positive x direction multiplied times the force that would be so let me put the position vector in so there's my position vector r multiply times this force which is a positive 400 newtons in the positive y direction and so 2 times 4 that gives me 800 newton meters in the k direction of course you realize now that if I take the vector in the opposite direction I get the exact same result but notice now that we place the two vectors twice as far away the two vectors making a couple my moment will be twice as large as it was before now what happens when we move the couple over here well again should make no difference because the distance between them now is the same as was over there and so from this very same de definition we can say that the moment is equal to uh, in this case the moment is equal to r uh, cross f so that would be one meter in the positive x direction multiplied times 400 newtons in the positive y direction and again you get 400 newton meters in the positive z direction so really doesn't matter where you move your forces but now you say wow since I put the forces farther away from point A shouldn't I get a different torque well let's find out let's calculate the torque relative to point A and so in this case we get the 400 newton force which causes a clockwise direction to the motion of the beam clockwise means a a negative torque so that would be minus 400 newtons multiplied times the distance this time would be 2 meters and notice that that would give me a negative torque that would be negative z direction and do we add to that this now of course we have a second force right here but this force would cause a counterclockwise direction that would be a positive torque so it would be 400 newtons times a distance this acts at a distance of 3 meters relative to point A notice is the line of action perpendicular distance is 3 meters and that would be the positive k direction so here we have a minus 800 newton meters plus 1200 newton meters which is 400 newton meters in the positive k direction. Notice it doesn't matter where you place the forces you still will get the exact same torque at A and I can assume then you'll get the exact same torque at B. It doesn't matter where you put a couple of forces 
the moment will always be the same. It only depends upon the magnitude of the forces and the distance between the two. And it doesn't matter where they're placed. When you increase the distance, you will increase the moment. But if you move the forces, keep the distance the same, the moment will stay the same. And the torque relative to the less left side of the beam and relative to the right side of the beam will stay the same no matter where those two forces are placed. A really important concept when it comes to moments and torques. And that's how we know it.